when we talked this year in religion about how God made man and then gave us choice, that was the only way that he could truly have uh, love, and that the only way that we could not be robots, but make the choice to choose to follow him and, and love him. If you have friends, sometimes you get to have uh, uh, great things that come out of that, but you also have the risk of they may do some things that you would not, or at least some things that you would not like for them to do. Um, so when we read chapter 6 today, I would like for you to pay attention to the relationship between these friends and kind of think about the good stuff that comes out of being friends with Freak and maybe some of the stuff that you might want to avoid. Chapter 6, Close Encounter of the Turd Kind. Fourth of July, right? Everybody goes nuts. The dads are getting drunk and having their cookouts, and the moms are trying to keep all the brats from blowing their precious little pinkies off with cherry bombs, and the kids are running wild through the backyards. It's like no rules apply, and that makes everything real edgy. If you know what I mean. Like, let's have a blast, and who cares what happens? Don't get the wrong idea. I love the fourth. It's just that people tend to get all choked up about firecracker holidays, and they don't see what's really going on. Which, like I say, is the dad swilling beer and acting numb. That's the basic formula. Not that Grimm ever swills anything stronger than root beer. No way. The poison never crossed his lips, he likes to say. Even though I've seen a picture of him in the army, and I'm pretty sure that looks like a bottle of beer in his hand, and he's got that same whacked-by-a-hammer grin that dudes always get when they're drinking. Anyhow, this is the first year I've got to go to the fireworks without Grimm and Graham which I've never understood because it's right down by the mill pond, where I've been allowed to go for years. So why should it make a difference just because a million people show up and watch the rocket's red glare over that smelly pond? The deal this year is that I get to go with Freak, which Graham thinks is a good idea because she's afraid he'll get crushed or something. She actually thinks people are going to step on him. Which just goes to show how brainless she can be sometimes, and scared of everything. I mean, nobody steps on little kids down there, so why would they step on Freak? Turns out the thing to worry about is not kid stompers, but beer swillers, like I mentioned before. Because Freak and I are still a couple of blocks from the pond, just kind of easing our way along when these punks start mouthing off. Hey, you mutton Jeff! Frankenstein and Igor! Don't look around, I'm talking to you, boneheads! What is this, a freak show? I know that voice. Tony D. They call him Blade. He's at least 17, and he's already been to juvie court three, four times. I heard he cut, cut a guy with a razor. He almost died. And everybody says the best way to handle Tony D is to just avoid him. Him and his whole gang. Cross the street, hide, whatever it takes. Yeah, you, he goes. And he's got this hippity walk strut, long and... He's got these fancy, cool cowboy boots with metal toes. Yeah, Andre the Giant and the Dwarf. Hold on a sec. I want a word with you. Only the way he talks, he goes, I want a void with ya. Except it's bad enough having to listen to this creep. I don't want to have to spell the dumb way he talks. Anyhow, big mistake. We stop and wait for Tony D, alias the Bad News Blade. Got any dudes? He asks, pretending like he's friendly. He's a couple of feet away, but you can smell the beer on his breath. And it smells like he ate something dead. For instance, roadkill. But maybe that's just my imagination. Pay attention, Tony D says. I asked, did you got any? Freak, his chest is all puffed out and his chin looks hard and he's looking right up at Tony D and he says, Got any what? Tony D has his hands on his hips and his punkster pals are trying to get closer, working through the crowd. He leans over Freak, and he says, Boomers, you little freak! M-80s! Maybe a rack of cherry bombs? Is that what's making a lump in your pocket, huh? Freak starts to hump himself away, trying to walk faster than he really can, which makes the leg brace bump against the ground. Come along, Maxwell, he says over his shoulder. Ignore the cretin. Blade goes, Hey, what? And he moves right in front of Freak. Want to say that again, little Freak Man? Freak says, Cretan. C-R-E-T-I-N. 
defined as one who suffers from mental deficiency. This seems like one of those times that you might not want your friend to do something and they do it. Hearing how little Tiny Freak is dissing the fearsome Tony D, alias Blade, I can't help it. I laugh out loud. Tony D is looking up at me and he's showing his white teeth. I swear they've been sharpened to look like vampire teeth. And I go, uh-oh. And I start to get real cold inside. Real icy. Because I can see that Blade is trying to make up his mind. Is he going to kill me quick? Or just fight me? Just then I hear the whoop of a siren. And like a miracle, this cop comes out of nowhere, heading for the mill pond. And Blade takes one look and he and his punksters are out of there, burning rubber in their Reeboks. Freak goes, whew! That was a close encounter of the turd kind. And it takes me a second to get the joke, but then I'm laughing, amazed he can be so cool about it. Like it was no big deal that Tony D was after us. You can take him, right? He asks a couple minutes later. And I go, are you kidding? You can't just fight Blade, you have to fight his whole gang too. You mean you couldn't take him? And I was giving him lip? That's about the size of it. Freak goes, oh my god. And he's shrieking and laughing and whooping it up so loud that everybody's looking at us like we're total goons, which isn't far from the truth. Freak hasn't got his crutch tonight, just the leg brace, and he's laughing so hard he falls down. Not that he has to go very far. Anyhow, I pick him up and it's amazing how light he is, like it's nothing for me to lift him. And maybe that's where I get the idea. Because later, when we're down by the pond and the first couple of rockets are streaking up, 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 Freak is making a fuss because he can't see. There are so many people crowding around, all he can see are feet and knees. And people are lifting up their little kids to see the fireworks explode like hot pink flowers in the sky. And so I sort of reach down without thinking and pick up Freak and set him up on my shoulders. He's kind of trembly up there until he grabs hold of my hair to steady himself. And then the first really big rocket whams off. A humongous thud. I can feel it in my stomach. And Freak is shouting, All right! And I know he's okay. He's not flipped out because I picked him up and put him on my shoulders like he was a little kid instead of possibly the smartest human being in the whole world. Magnesium, he shouts as the white sparkles glitter down over the pond. Potassium chlorate, as the shells go whoop, 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 and everybody goes ooh. Potassium nitrate, sulfur, aluminum. And after a burst of red hot fire in the sky, Freak tugs my hair and screams, Copper! That's copper powder combusting with oxygen. And when the fire blossoms are flashing blue, he goes, Good old strontium nitrate. And I'm thinking, whoa. Is there anything this little dude doesn't know? At the end, like always, they have a thing called the grand finale. When they just go nuts and they light off everything at once and it sounds like World War III. Whizzing and banging and popping. And there's so much hot stuff falling from the sky you can hear it sizzling in the pond. Freak keeps an eye. Freak keeps on shouting out the names of chemicals and elements until the last spark dies in that scummy pond. And the crowd cheers and then everybody tries to leave at once like a bunch of morons. I'm picturing some of you from class, and I'm, I'm sort of putting you into different categories of you're the friend that is maybe a little shocked by some of your friend's behavior, and some of you are the friends that maybe are shocking other people with what you're choosing to do. I wonder where you see yourself in that.